What is going on guys? So I have got another awesome collab with my boy Robbie Boyd here. We're gonna talk about his experience kind of getting out of the army. Okay, so one of the things that I don't have experience with, obviously, is getting out of the military, that whole process and all that kind of jazz. With his experience, he was processed out after or really during AIT. And so I want you to talk about when that opportunity came up, right? So they told you you could do this or do, or do this. Did they specifically tell you? you could uh, pick another MOS because if you guys don't know, Robbie over here, if you missed last video, failed the very last test or failed out of the 68 trolley course on the very last test. And then they gave him the option, I believe, to stay in or get out. We've talked about that before, very valid reasons for getting out. But whenever that opportunity was given to you, what? how did that conversation go? What happened was I sat down to take the very last test and then they were like, all right, you're not taking it, leave. And I was like, oh, okay. So I got up and I left. And then they were like, all right, go grab your textbooks, bring them over. So I turned in all my textbooks. And then they were like, all right, now you have to go report to, um, you have to go report to the holdover platoon. Mm -hmm. So the holdover platoon is people that had something go wrong in their paperwork when it came to going to their duty station or failing out. And you pretty much just go and then you just clean all day. And that um, is, so that's what holder, holdovers do. That's <laughs> all you do is a holdover. So like we would sweep the entire barracks, which is like a good, good like two acres, three acres of like three story dorms. And all, <laughs> oh my god, it sucked. But anyway, so I was in a holdover platoon, and then after being there for about two weeks, they walked the first sergeant and my platoon sergeant walked up to me and asked, "What do you want to do in terms of being in the military or getting out? Your options are to chapter out, and then we will decide what your discharge would be, or." to reclass into needs of the army and essentially what that means is they're going to hit refresh on a web page and whatever is the number one mos on that page is the job you're going to get and more likely uh and most times than not you're going to get truck driver fueler or combat engineer those are like the top three but we also know some people that got 68 whiskey we also know some people that got more desirable mos but it's basically luck of the draw but you might get something you don't like. You might get something you like, but the odds aren't in your favor. Exactly. So if, and a lot of people ask me, cause there's actually a lot of people that are in my situation that are in AIT right now, which is really weird, but <laughs> they'll ask me, should I get out like you did or should I stay in and just kind of go through the army? And it really depends on your situation. If you are like me and you had a gut feeling that you can chase something, or at least you have a backup plan, don't be like me with zero backup plan. My only plan was cameras. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> so luckily everything worked out. But if you are somebody that doesn't have a backup plan, you don't have any family to go back to, and you don't really think that you could possibly survive, then I, I don't think you should get out of the military. I would suggest that you reclass into whatever they want. After you finish that AIT, after I think eight months of doing that job, you can then put in a submission to reclass. And hopefully your leadership will understand your situation and they will try to work in your favor. So that's always an option for people. Another option would be to get out. I got an honorable discharge, which I actually okay. have gotten a lot of people that don't believe me. I actually got an honorable discharge. So scot free, no negative effects that are going to happen for me leaving the mm -hmm. military. But a lot, another option for you is that you could wait six months for the barring to end. Then you could reenlist and you can reenlist and then choose your job. And they don't tell you that, but that is an option. You just have to get a waiver. You have to get approved. And as long as you left on good terms, such as an honorable discharge, you can actually reclass into, or you can actually re-enlist as a reservist, as National Guard, you can go into the Air Force, you can go into something else. I would suggest Air Force, no, I'm kidding. Um, so, <laughs> but he's really not. <laughs> so you can actually, there's a lot of things that are actually in your favor if you have that decision. And the actual process of getting out is very time consuming, very. It took me three right. months to get out. So like all the paperwork, like I know you're gonna have to kind of turn back in your, your stuff that they nope, gave you. Nope, no, I, well, not, I had to turn in two things. My uh, I guess they didn't my issue Gore -Tex, all, all that. I had yeah. to turn in my Gore-Tex and like one winter coat thing. Well, uh, yeah, like the the uniforms and stuff, but I guess you didn't have all that gear. I didn't have know? I didn't have all like the combat gear. Yeah, now. yeah. But, so like um, things like that, like if you had a, if you had a rucksack issued to you. Yeah, I would have to give that back. Yeah. So that that's kind of what I'm saying. Yeah. But like all the paperwork, so that just took 
several months. Yeah, and it uh, very little of it was actually paperwork. It was all online training. Really? Yeah. All of it is online training, teaching you how to cope back into civilian life. Okay, so when you were getting out, it, they're basically like trying to get you pre-adjusted. Essentially. Uh -huh. So during the process of you getting out, they obviously, they have to send in the form. That form has to get approved by all of your, your higher ups. And then it has to go back down to you. And then once they get it, then they can start doing the paperwork, which then for me, I had to go through BAMC and I had to clear through all the floors again. And I had to get everything cleared, my mental, my physical, uh, and all that jazz. You have to get everything and make sure that nothing has happened to you since you joined the army. And if it does, then that means that you can possibly fall for benefits or a claim, blah, blah, blah. So all this stuff starts to come into into play. So it's just a lot of paperwork. And the online training was literally just like sit there, click some buttons, and then you answer some questions. Is it really helpful? I'm not gonna say it isn't or is, but- um, Some online training stuff, I think, I'll just say is kind of pointless in a yes. way. So so now there's obviously a lot of things that you gotta do, but people don't realize how much stuff it could possibly be, but it's a lot, it's time consuming. And the day you got out, or like the week leading up, like what was that like? So it was honestly just like any other day. But although what was cool was once you were closer to the getting out process, so I had already found a place that I was gonna live, I was gonna be staying with a friend. So whenever we would finish cleaning in the morning or whatever, we do our police call at the entire barracks, I would go up to my sergeant and say, hey, can I, You first you have to, you have to clean your dorm to the absolute <laughs> molecule and it has to be spick and span. So when I had gotten there, it was a, it was destroyed. Like, mm -hmm. It was terrible. I don't know how that always happens. Right? So I ended up having to get like a steel wool sponge and like the calcium block and I was scrubbing the tub for five hours. And then I finally got it clean. Like, it was mad. But anyway, so once you get everything clean, then you have to start moving all of your items out. So what I would do is I would ask my platoon sergeant because she knew that I, I followed the rules. I'm not really someone that tries to rebel. I'm just like, hey, like I'm trying to get this stuff done. It would be on her and she would say, okay, well you can go, you can go off base and you can start taking all your things to your apartment, to where you're gonna be staying. The last week was just a lot of moving, a lot of packing. Rather than having to stay and clean all day, she would say, go back to your barracks and get all that taken care of. So okay. the last week, of me being in the military was a lot of that. And then I would get a call. She would say, oh, we need you to go to this part. So essentially the last week was cleaning my dorms, all that. And then I would have to go and finalize paperwork, which was signing things and making sure that I wasn't disabled in any way and getting all that stuff cleared up. The last day was turning in my patch, uh, my actual like um, platoon, not platoon, company patch, turning my company patch. And then they were just like, all right, and that was it. And that was it. I got out of my car and then I left. <laughs> and then I was I was done at like 11 a.m. and I was free. All right, so that's gonna be it for this video, talking in general about his experience getting out of the military during the end of AIT. Something I'm not familiar with at all, so this was actually really fun for me. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys wanna check out his channel, he's doing some of his own YouTube videos and stuff. You like this whole topic of the video, I ended up getting out. And what I did is I started chasing videography as my career. So far, it's doing pretty well. I've worked with people like Nick Bear, Travis S, a lot of YouTubers in the San Antonio and Austin area. And uh, I'm really excited to see where that goes. So my YouTube channel is documenting me trying to find clients, me trying to survive on just doing video work. So if you guys are interested in any of that, links are gonna be down below. That's what my channel's about. Yeah, so if you wanna see what his life has been like after the military, check him out on YouTube for sure. That's gonna be it for this video. If you guys are not following me on Instagram, Snapchat, social media links are right here. I hope you guys have an amazing, freaking day and I'll see you later. Drop.